All right. So you were in Vegas for the NHL draft in the sphere. What was that like? It's really cool. Um, you know, it, when we first walked in, they just had like one graphic up on, on the screen and we we're like, is this it? You know, <laughs> and, and then the draft started and it, it was like, um, it was like the, the, the whole sphere turned white and like, like it was a sheet of ice and then the ice starts cracking and uh, it oh was, my god it was just really really cool and like just just to think like that was just a draft like you imagine what that is like when there's a band playing it, you know along with all the visuals and honestly like you know if you're listening to this and you're on the fence about you know going out and seeing a band there or go do it because it it is there is no venue like that on earth other than the one that's in London. It looks amazing. It just looks, I don't know. It almost looks like it's a little, <laughs> like if they wanted to, they could really mess with your head if they to put the, the certain certain graphics oh, up yeah. there. If, it, honestly, like I was sitting down on the floor and I, I caught myself like looking up at the, the graphics and everything. And then I would look back down and I was like a little like off kilter for a second. Disoriented, you know? yeah. <laughs> I, I regained my bearings, but um so, you know, you can only imagine like a, you know, a Grateful Dead show or a fish. Show or amazing. You know? Amazing. It, it sounds like, you know, what do they say? If you build it, they will come. If, if It sounds like something that everybody must experience at least once. I agree. Um, go and experience it. I mean, even days when there's not a concert there, they do this uh, movie called Postcard from Earth. And it's just all this video. I think it's like an hour long of like all these different places on Earth, and it, it it that looks really cool too. I haven't seen it, but it, from what I've read, like that that's even worth it. It's like I think General Mission for it's like seventy bucks, which seems like a lot for a movie, but it it's it's a cool. Uh, it's such a cool thing. Okay, that's a bargain because that's what scares me. Is yeah, I'd love to see a concert there. You know, fish, who have the who, whatever. But but the, you know, the, the the ticket prices have to be enormous. I'd I'd pay seventy bucks just to go inside. Yeah, it it it's so cool. And then like in the lobby, they have a bunch of like AI robots, and like it's just <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, it's it's literally like uh, like going to another world for for a couple of hours. That's Vegas, and anyway, like they're, they're, it's their own. they are their own little world, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but on to the Penguins major this is huge that basically and I think this started at last season's trade deadline but basically it looks like Kyle Dubas decided this isn't a contender we're, we're not going to blow it up we're not as, as he said we're not going to you know strip it down to the to the bones or whatever he said but Sounds like they're doing a, a, a little bit of a rebuild or they're punting the season or or something. But that's a huge ph philosophical shift from what they've been doing for like the last 20 years. Yeah, I mean, you'll never catch him using the, the rebuild word. But, um, you know, when we we got the chance to talk to him out in Vegas, um, he basically said he's not signing any learn long term contracts. Uh, you know, this is going to be bring in veterans that can help us for this season and maybe next season um, and see where it gets them. Um, I think, you know, when he first came in last season, it was like, OK, I'm going to give this core group one shot by bringing in big names. And, you know, he went out and got Carlson. He brought in Riley Smith, like recognizable names. And it didn't go well at all last season. And now he's like, OK, that was your one shot. Now we're rebuilding, even though he won't use the word rebuild it's crazy that I, I i don't know it's just it's just so different because they've been quote unquote all in ever since crosby arrived and yep. now and and as a result of that they have no farm system or no no, no good prospects uh and they're in kind of bad shape because because basically because of what happened with Hextall and you know Rutherford before that and even even Dubas Dubas is all, all all his moves last season didn't hit so this is this is new territory for the Penguins. It is, um, you know, I don't think that they're a, you know a bottom five team in the NHL or anything like that. I I do think that they can 
you know, compete for a seventh, eighth seed in the playoffs. But as far as them being a contender, no. I mean, it, you know, a successful season for the Penguins would be to make the playoffs, maybe win a round, but that would be about the extent of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to go back to a couple of weeks ago, June 20th, they signed Alex um, Najokovic to a two year contract. I think that was a big surprise to everyone because we all assumed he was gone. And so now we have of Ned still have Tristan Jari. You got Bloomquist in the minors, but how do you think the goalie position is going to shake out? Do you think it's actually going to be Ned and Jari all season, or do you think Jari is still on his way out? I think if they could, they would trade Jari tomorrow. Um, I don't think that there are many suitors out there for him. Um, you know, I think the Penguins would have to retain some salary, but I, I don't even think that that's the issue. It's the fact that, you know, including this season, there's still four years left on his deal. And I think the term is a little bit too long for anybody that that would really be interested to take on. Um, you know, I don't think the Penguins would have any problem, you know, retaining a million dollars in salary, but I don't think the team that would be interested in him wants to take a four-year gamble. So I think, that, you know, unfortunately the Penguins are stuck with him. But, but again, when Dubas spoke last week and – Sullivan, they said it's a competition. Nobody is being anointed the starter. Um, so, you know, it's very possible that Nadalkovich could be the starter. I think what will probably happen is the beginning of the season, there'll be a lot of, um, you know, 50-50 type of games. Um, and then, you know, what, when they get into November, they have uh, four sets of back-to-backs in November. So uh, you'll see a lot of both goaltenders, I think, for the first like two months of the season. And then maybe one of them be it becomes your clear starter and you see more of like a 70 30 split. But I think it's, I think I do believe them when they say it's an open competition, just given the fact that the Dalkovich started the last like 12, 13 games in a row last season. He started the last 12, 13 games in a row. And I forget like two, three, the last two, three games of the season, the, the the Penguins were eliminated. And even then, when the games, when they were eliminated from, from, from the playoffs and the games meant nothing, they still played Ned. Even though he was exhausted, they would still rather play him than play Jari. That's, that's where we're at, and I can't believe they brought him back. Yeah, I, I'm really surprised because at the end of the season, Dubas – basically said he had a conversation with Ned and said like, Hey, it's a pretty crowded goalie room here. Uh, you know, I don't know what kind of opportunity you're going to have. And then on June 20th, out of nowhere, he, they resigned him. And I know, you know, that the room seems to really like him. And I know the media really likes him because he actually gives you like a good quote rather than the, the can like, Oh, I need to play better, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, you know, I was I was definitely surprised. I thought for sure it would be uh, Jari and Bloomquist, but that so that makes me wonder. You know, I guess Bloomquist is just going to be your starter in in Wolfsbear for the foreseeable future, and we didn't get much of a sample size of him in the playoffs last year because they were eliminated in the first round. So maybe that's it. Maybe they just need more time to uh, to see what Bloomquist could do in the minors, and and then hope that maybe they could uh, trade Jari towards the end of the season or, you know, maybe in the middle of the season. It kind of seemed like those AHL playoffs were like a uh, um, audition for Bloomquist. And I mean, you know, I mean, I don't know what happened, but you know, they, they, they were eliminated pretty quickly. So yeah. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess they just decided to wait and see. And I mean, that's fine. I mean, Bloom, goalies sometimes take a long time to develop. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Um, they made a move on, on June 29th to get Kevin Hayes um, and got a for, – for, for, a, for a second round draft pick. And basically – basically, it, it's it, – the way it sounds like he's, he's, he's terrible, but we're, we're, we'll take him on just for the draft pick. And I don't know. I don't know what, what – I mean, 
it, it, it kind of seems like Dubas is obsessed with draft picks now. Uh, I would say he's definitely obsessed with draft picks. I think they also got a fifth round, conditional fifth round pick uh, as part of that deal. They're only paying half of the salary. I believe Philadelphia is paying half of the salary as well. Um, it's a little concerning that now he's been basically paid to leave two different places. <laughs> uh, but, you know, who knows? It, it seems like in that bottom six, they're going to throw a bunch of stuff at a dartboard and hope some of the darts stick and <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um I mean, he's not a terrible player, but his analytics aren't great. He's not a fast player, which is what apparently the Penguins are still trying to play a speed game. Um, you know, the the what the optics of the trade really don't make any sense as far as what the Penguins are trying to do. But I guess at fifty percent of the salary, and you got a second round pick and a conditional fifth round pick, it's it's a pretty good deal from a business perspective. Yeah. Yeah, um, I don't understand the need to get draft picks. If you draft a player now, when are they going to be ready? Three, four, five years from now? Three, four, five years from now, Crosby, Malkin, Latang, all those guys, they'll be gone. Right. I don't, I don't understand. I don't, I don't know. It just seems like. NHL draft, you're drafting a bunch of 18 year olds and it's just such a crap, you know, in, in the NFL, those guys are like 20, 21, 22, they're more developed. And when they, you know, when they get drafted, they almost contribute almost immediately. But with, you know, baseball does this too. You, you draft 18 year olds and you hope they turn into something in five or six years. And it's just like, I don't know. It just seems like such a, such a gamble. It is. Um, I think that Dubas just sees it as, you know, we have, I mean, they only had two draft picks this year. <laughs> they only had no draft picks on the first day and only a few on the second day. Um, I, I think he just figures the more picks that I stockpile, the more chance that we land somebody that's a diamond in the rough. I mean, look at Patrick Hornquist. He was the last pick of the draft in his draft year. Very, the, literally the last pick of the whole draft. And he ended up being a two-time Stanley Cup champion and, a, you know, played with Sidney Crosby for a long time. So I guess, you, that you know, that's one way to look at it. I'm just going to stockpile these draft picks and hope that I find a diamond in the rough in, in one of these draft picks. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's – you just get quantity and, and, and hope something sticks. Uh, another – move they made was trading Riley Smith for a um um conditional uh fifth round pick and a, a um in a second round pick I think in 2027 um for um yeah so Riley Smith to, to the Rangers I am so I'm so angry I don't understand this dude I don't I, I don't it, for everything I've heard is he didn't want to be in Pittsburgh hey buddy I, I I don't know. I'm sorry you got traded to the team with to to a legendary team with some of the greatest players ever. I'm sorry you've been put in such a horrible situation. I mean, yeah, Pittsburgh isn't Las Vegas, but my goodness, we're not Siberia or something, dude. And hey, here's an idea: be a professional. Yeah, like he 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 acted like he didn't want to be here. He played like he didn't want to be here. Good riddance, you jerk. Yeah, that was a, an unmitigated disaster. Um, and hey, credit to Dubas for admitting it was a disaster and trading the guy away a year later. Um, I don't know, it, you know, it, he just like kind of longed for the days of being in Las Vegas and kind of moped around. I mean, it, it said a lot to me that he didn't really even show up to Pitts. He got traded here, but never even came to Pittsburgh until basically training camp is what I understand. Like, you know, he's playing celebrity softball games in Las Vegas, even though he's oh. part of the Penguins, which, hey, whatever, they won the Stanley Cup. Yeah, I, I get yeah. that. And But, yeah, I mean, from everything I heard, I've heard, he wasn't liked in the room. He kind of didn't want to be here. And, I mean, his play on the ice kind of showed that. So, 
hey, you know, good luck in in New York, and uh, we'll see what happens. But surprised the team like the Rangers that, that wanted him based off of what happened here. I, I would have figured that uh, maybe he, he would have ended up in a different place. But I think he had some sort of uh, no movement clause where he can only go to like ten different teams. Oh, <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Yeah, we'll see if he he actually decides to want to play for 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 New York. Yeah, we, great. Um, funny that the the Penguins play the Rangers their first game. That that'll be funny. Maybe uh, maybe maybe we'll uh, maybe maybe they'll knock some sense into him or something. Um, then on the first day of free agency, they get a bunch of people, mostly one year deals. Yes, I I've never seen this. Basically, just get a whole bunch of stuff and <laughs> see what sticks um anthony anthony bavillier uh matt grilzik i think are the are the big ones uh this blake lazotte i'm i hear a lot of good things about yeah um, that, that was actually a pretty good yeah he's a good like fourth line guy he has a little bit of speed um you know i, I think the bottom six is a little bit better but i mean you know they're all like you said they're all the Throw throw a bunch of crap at the wall here and see yeah see what happens. They they signed uh, I, I don't know if you want to use the word goon but uh, that that Boca uh, Imama he, he uh, you know maybe he you call him up when you're playing against Tom Wilson and Matt Rempe. I don't know but <clears throat> hey why not <laughs> it's yeah. it's it's obvious you need someone like that so yeah let's go let's go get a fighter sure yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and so, but I heard one of their goals was to get a left winger on the top line, and they didn't do that. Now, we're not done yet, because I keep hearing these rumors about Tarasenko, and I think that would be pretty cool, but who's it going to be now? As of, as of right now, it's got to be Drew, Drew O'Connor, right? Yeah, right now I would say it's you know probably O'Connor, Crosby, and Rust, and then... Uh, Raquel, Malkin, and Bunting. Oh yeah, Bunting. Which I I I, I actually really like Michael Bunting. So uh, you know, that's not a bad top six, but it could be better. Yeah, yeah, and then who knows in the bottom six? So, yeah, the bottom you know, six. I mean, right now they have like six centers. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, I don't know, like, where's Lars Eller? Is he going to be a wing now? Like, I don't know. Yeah, there's there's more moves to come. I feel like because they also have like eight defensemen now. Yeah, they, you know, they signed Sebastian Ajo today. Not the good Sebastian Ajo, but just the <laughs> Sebastian Ajo. Um, you know, <laughs> they signed Grizzly. Um, you know. They did not tender P.O. Joseph, so obviously he's and he's gone. He's he's gone. he he went to uh, St. Louis with his brother. Yeah. Um, um, you know he's out. Um, you know obviously we still have Pedersen, uh, Latang, Carlson, um, and then they've got Ludwig. They've signed Ryan Shea back for a year, um, and Saint Ivany, who was really good last year. So there's kind of like a log jam down there too. Um, it's going to be really interesting to to see how it all plays out. I mean, I know it's, you know, months from now that, until the season starts. But, uh, yeah, the bottom six, it's definitely got to play itself out. And the defense is going to have to play itself out, too. Because right now they, they have way too many kind of bottom guys on, in, on the both defense and, uh, and forward. Yeah, it, it's funny. His – that guy's official name is Sebastian Ajo, not that Sebastian Ajo. It's like, it's almost like his official name or whatever. Yeah. Um, is if they trade someone, if they're, if they're still making trades, do you think Raquel, it seems like Lars Eller might be gone. Yeah. Do you think they would try to get rid of Graves or is it in a situation like Jari that, that nobody's going to touch him? Well, it's funny you mentioned Graves. I didn't even mention his name when we were going down the list of defensemen. <laughs> he was that bad. I think four years left on his deal. Might be five. Um, 
if they could move Graves, they would, I think. Um, more than likely, it would be a guy like Eller, um, who is a solid veteran guy, like reliable guy that would be really good on a, a contending team like a Colorado or, you know, to replace like Tired, you know, even even a team like you know Edmonton that was just in the in the final, um, they would probably move for Cal if they could. But then, who do you replace him with as a top six forward? Unless they're getting a guy like Tarasenko. Obviously, you're not going to trade for Tarasenko; he's free agent. But you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, if they get like a second round pick for Raquel, I'm sure they would do it tomorrow. Um, if it, you know if they get a third round pick for Eller, I'm sure they would do that. Um, but I, I do think that there might be another another trade coming, and they do have cap space as well. So we shall see. Yeah, I think it's around four, three, four million or something like that. So, um, we'll see. The funny thing about all these moves they made is a lot of them are one year deals. They could be if they're like out of it at the trade deadline next season they could be sellers they could be one of those teams that get rid of all all their players which would be really weird yeah and i honestly i think that's kind of what dubis is thinking like hey if, the, if it doesn't work again this year at least i could stockpile more draft picks i'll get third and fourth <laughs> round draft picks for all these guys and we'll have 19 picks in next year's draft weird just weird this we're, we're in we're in unprecedented times, that's for sure. Um, it, um, but you know, it's been, it's been a great run for the Penguins for since oh, about yeah. 2008 here. <laughs> yeah, we're so blessed. We're just so we've been so fortunate. I've I've never, I don't think, well, I don't think in the history of sports you've had, you've had three top players that have played together for what almost 20 years. You know, Crosby, Malkin, Malkin and Latang. You know, you yeah, don't this is their 18th year together. Yeah. It's it's incredible. It's yeah. So I mean, we've yeah, we've been so blessed, and yeah. Okay, now we're gonna suffer. Oh wow, we you know, it's, you know, when I looked at all those playoff games and stuff like that, I thought, yeah, this is this is the anniversary of when we we won this game and when when this awesome thing happens. So it's like, we, yeah, we have wonderful the whole month of uh, May and June. Yeah, you know, are like you know, you go back and look at. Uh, this date in Penguins history, it's yeah. just a huge playoff win or something like that. It's pretty crazy. Exactly. Exactly. But the funny thing is, they might be good. Um, I think bunting is gonna have a huge impact, and he's gonna have a huge impact on the power play. He's that grit that they needed. He's that, you know, that Kunitz Hornquist type. Maybe Graves is gonna be better. You know, maybe Carlson is gonna be better. Maybe this actually this team will actually be pretty solid. Yeah, you know, I think you know we've talked about this before. It does take defensemen time to adjust, and we've talked about the Paul Martin example and the Sergey Gonchar example. Gonchar, yeah. I do think that Graves is going to be better this year. You know, he was also hurt a bunch last year. I think Carlson is going to be better, and I think he's going to benefit from David Quinn being here. He had his best season ever under David Quinn in San Jose. Um, and I asked Mike Sullivan about that when we were out in Vegas. And he said, you know, not only is that existing relationship there with Carlson, but that's one of the best things about David Quinn is he develops relationships with players. He, he's, he's a good communicator and he thinks he's going to develop really good relationships with all the other defensemen as well. And he's going to run the power play. And Dubas was saying the one thing that he liked about Quinn is he'll question Mike Sullivan. He's not, they go way back to their days in college and he's not afraid to say like, I don't like that idea. I don't like the way you're running this power play. Uh, you know, he's not afraid to speak up and give his own opinion on the way, how, you know, he thinks. things. So, you know, when you, when you look at it, I don't think Graves could be any worse than he was last year. The power play <laughs> certainly can't be any worse than it was last year. Exactly. And, you know, so right there, the, the, those two things have to be better. I think Carlson will be better. I think, you know, he's still going to make boneheaded plays. There's just no doubt about that. So is Latang. Um, so is Malkin. But um, 
you know, this team can be a playoff team, I feel like. Like I said earlier, I, I don't have any delusions of grandeur that they're going to be cup contenders or anything like that, but I do think that they could be a playoff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think not enough is being said about getting that uh, David Smith. Uh, I think they've had a problem ever. I think ever since uh, Rick Tockett left, I think they've had a problem with assistant coaches. Uh, seems like, yeah, seems like it hasn't gone well. So hopefully, hopefully this, uh, this one actually helps. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they already have a great relationship. Um, you know, he's been a head coach in this league. And like I said, he, he has that relationship with, um, Carlson as well. And, uh, you know, all those, you know, they can't hurt. They, they, they're, they can all, only be positives and, you know, Quinn, Quinn is a, is a good hockey mind. And I think, I think uh, we'll see better things from power play, you know, but, but again, it's up to the players to execute. And if they draw up all these great plans and then the players go out and do their own thing, then yeah, it's not going to work. 18,000 passes on a power play and don't, don't shoot, you know, with this, you know, it's, you know, you know, that's not the coach's fault, but you know, exactly. <laughs> coach will get, coach will get blamed for it. Uh, so they get all these players, they acquire a bunch of players you have the younger players like Sam Poulin, Pustinen, uh, Pouli RV, um, some of the prospects they got in the, the, the Gensel trade. Are they are they just being are they not good enough to play or are they not going to play or are, are they going to be competing? In, in, are they in the mix to, to compete even though the, the players acquired all these players? Yeah, that's what I worry about. You know, they, they go out and they, they get these guys and – now are they are they blocking the Jaegers and the Poolins and, and, and those guys from coming up and getting to play in the NHL? Uh, so that's why I, I do wonder if they're going to maybe try to trade an Eller or an Achari because they keep on talking about we got to get younger, we got to get faster, we got to get hungrier, and then you go and get Kevin Hayes. <laughs> it's yeah. like yeah, okay, you're saying this, but you what you did is is the exact opposite of what you just said you wanted to do. So. I, I wouldn't be surprised if there are one or two more trades that, that, that might happen because right now there's, there's no spot on this roster for, you know, Jaeger and pool and uh, you know, and a couple of those other guys. Um, so we'll see what happens, but uh, you know, it, it's kind of more of the same right now. You know, we, we hear this message for the past couple of years, we got to get younger, we got to get faster, we got to get hungrier. And then, you know, you go out and you get, Riley Smith, or you go out and you get, uh, you know, this year, Kevin Hayes. So we'll see what happens there. But um, I mean, obviously I think they'll be given every chance to make the team, but it's like, where's the place for them? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, okay. We're at the beginning of July. Lots of stuff can still happen. Last year, the Carlson trade didn't happen until August 6th. So who knows? Who knows what could still happen? Yeah, I think there's a lot of movement left in the entire NHL budget. Oh my goodness! Uh, I think, I think the Capitals are like 15 million over the cap, and Anaheim is eight million under the floor, or something like that. So, like, yeah, there's a, still a lot of moves that that are going to be made. Uh, yeah, maybe pick up some bargains. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't look today, but as of like six p.m. yesterday, Anaheim had not made any moves. They were the only team in the NHL that didn't sign anybody. And you gotta spend. You gotta yeah, get. Up to the, you gotta get up to the floor, floor bro. Yeah, they're not even to the floor yet. Maybe they're gonna be the new Arizona Coyotes. I don't know. <laughs> what have they decided? What the Utah? They're just calling the Utah Hockey Club right now. For for this year, they're just going to be called the Utah Hockey Club um, because it it take. I guess technically, you have to inform the league a year in advance if you're going to make any name changes or anything. So they're going to just wait and uh, announce that later on this season, and then have uniforms ready for next season. Interesting, interesting, but that does stink. That I mean, because Arizona basically didn't even try. And it was, you know, they were they were like in a joke of a situation with that 
tiny little arena or whatever. And now it looks like they're actually making moves. Um, but now it looks like maybe Anaheim is the new Arizona and they're not even going to try. I hate, I hate situations like that where, you know, a team is tanking. Well, they got new uniforms. So that's all. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Are they new old uniforms like the Kings? Because the yes. Kings just went back to what they did in the eighties. Yeah. Basically they just took the old docs logo and put it on an orange uniform. Okay. Okay. It looks pretty good actually. And the, the Kings looks pretty good too, but um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see how it uh, plays out on the ice. Hey, if they want to send uh, Gibson to, to the Penguins, you know, have him come home. That's you know, I'd, I'd be I'd be okay with that. They could have our uh, Graves and and Jari or something like that if they if they need salary. Yeah, that would that would actually be quite all right. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I worry or not worry. I wonder about John Gibson though. He's played in front of a bad team for so long now. Is he actually a good goalie anymore, or is he just you know shell shocked from well, from you know, all the bad teams he's been on. Well, is Jari shell shocked from the, like the, this whole situation? I mean, he's been in the penguin system for like 10 years now or something like that. It's been a long time. Yeah, that, that, was a, think... that was a long time ago that he gave up that uh, pass and double overtime to the Islanders. Ooh, 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 I'm still not over that. I was still not over that. He basically single-handedly lost a playoff series. And he's still hasn't won a playoff series all these years nope. later. Nope. Nope. And and apparently his conditioning sucks, and that's why he's not as good in the second half. Yeah. What are we doing here? I don't know. I've heard all of these things. You're you're uh, right on, I think. <laughs> all right. So we shall see. So how can uh people find you and follow you and get more of your work? Uh, you can find me on Twitter or X, whatever they're calling it these days, um, at PGHVC. Um, and as far as the official report goes, uh, the easiest thing to do is just Google it, and you'll be able to to find it that that way. There you go. There you go. Hey, thanks so much for coming on. Always, always, <laughs> like we said, either either uh, free agent day and uh, and uh, trade deadline day. They're two of the, the the best days of the year in the NHL calendar. And and schedule release day. I'm I'm uh, memorizing it as we speak. And uh, it's a, just one interesting tidbit about the, the schedule this year. They have twelve Tuesday home games. Why? Random. I I don't know. But the 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 nice thing is, forty eight percent of their home games are on a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. There you go. Okay. Okay. 14 sets of back to back. So that's pretty brutal. That's rough. That's rough. I saw something that in one year, like 79 or, or something like that, they had like 32 back to backs or some crazy thing like that. Oh, wow. Like, what? what? I don't know what the heck happened back I don't know then. What they were doing back then. <laughs> right. Oh, oh, oh. This is the year they have that Four Nations thing, right? Yes. So they're so shutting they're down for like nine days of the season. Yeah, from and, uh, February 9th to February 21st, the Penguins don't don't play. But okay, so I don't know who the f four nations are. Obviously, Canada is one of them. U.S. is um, one of them. Yeah, it's uh, Canada, North America, Finland, and Sweden. So it'll be Crosby on Canada and Carlson on Sweden, and probably nobody else in the Penguins. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, they didn't invite Russia. No, no Russia. Um. And no, uh, no Czech Republic or Chechnya, I guess they're called now. But um, I, I, I wish they would have had six teams. But I know it's hard to do in the middle of the season where they could have had just like, you remember the World Cup of Hockey where they had like an under twenty five yeah. team, and then, um, and then they had another world team for guys like Kopitar, who you know the 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 smaller yeah, nations yeah. that they couldn't feel. We should have done like a world team or something like that. And then the under 25 team, I thought it would have been a lot cooler, but when you're trying to do something within like a two week span, I guess four teams is probably the more ideal way to do it. But they're going to the, the to the Olympics, right? Next year. But that's in two years. Or you're, is it next year or two years? I think it's next year. Oh yeah. Okay. I don't know. Uh, maybe don't I'm know. wrong. I, well, the summer Olympics are this year. So maybe yeah. Like, I think it might be two years. Maybe. 
Maybe. Oh, well. <laughs> All right. We'll see. All right. Hey, thanks for coming on. No problem. Anytime. Okay. See you. Thanks.